JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's Daily Market Review for June the 19th. I am Harlamos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the dollar traded higher against all but two of the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian morning Friday. It gained the most versus uh, GBP and SEC, while it found uh, it was found nearly unchanged against uh, yen, the yen and NOC. The strengthening of the dollar and the yen suggests that market participants continue trading in a risk of fashion. Turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that major EU indices closed in the negative territory, perhaps due to fresh fears of a second wave in coronavirus infections worldwide. At this point, it is worth mentioning that uh, infected cases surged yesterday, hitting a new daily record. Another, re another negative uh, for the European markets may have been Wirecard's uh, plunge of 61.8% after the company's auditor refused to sign off the 2019 accounts due to a missing 2.1 million uh, US dollars. The U.S. session later in the day, the U.S. session uh, finished with Wall Street's main indices on the mixed side. Dow slid 0.15 percent. The S&P closed uh, virtually unchanged, while Nasdaq gained 0.33 percent. In Asia today, uh, things were a bit brighter, with Japan's Nikkei 225 and China's Shanghai Composite gaining 0.47 uh, and 0.83 percent, respectively. The overall picture of the equity market enhances our view that investors are finding it hard to assume a clear direction. As we noted yesterday, it seems that there is a battle between those who are optimistic over an economic recovery as lockdown measures continue to be lifted around most of the world and those who are concerned over a second wave of coronavirus infections after the new flare-up in China as well as the, the surge in cases in several US states. We still see decent chances for the broader appetite to improve if uh, most governments around the globe continue to ease their restrictive measures, but until we get clear indications of further recovery, we prefer to stay sidelined. We repeat that in order to start examining the bearish case, we need to see more, more governments reintroducing restrictions, uh, something that could result in a second hit to the global economy. Now back to the currencies, the pound was one of the two biggest uh, losers among the G10s, despite a somewhat more hoggish uh, than expected Bank of England yesterday. The bank kept interest rates unchanged at 0.10% and via an 8 to 1 vote it expanded its QE purchases by another 100 billion pounds through year end. The increase was uh, largely anticipated, but the fact that purchases will continue until the end of the year suggests that they may be carried out at a somewhat slower pace than previously. On top of that, in the aftermath of the decision, Bank of England Governor Bailey said that uh, at this gathering, policymakers did not discuss negative interest rates, neither a yield curve control. The pound spiked up uh, in both instances, the Bank of England decision and the Bailey's comments, but the overall daily trend stayed negative. Today we got uh, the UK retail sales for May with both uh, the headline and core, uh, and core rates re rebounding by more than anticipated and still the pound did not uh, react. It seems that uh, GBP traders are more concerned with the political scene and specifically Brexit rather than monetary policy and data.
With the Bank of England decision now out of uh, their way, they may lock their gaze on headlines surrounding the EU leader summit uh, which started yesterday. Now, with the EU and the UK making no progress in the latest round of talks and the EU and the UK insisting that everything should be sorted out before the end of the year, anything suggesting that the two sides are very distant in finding common ground may add extra pressure to the British currency. Apart from the Bank of England, we had two more central banks deciding on, deciding on monetary policy yesterday, the SNB and the Norges Bank. The SNB meeting proved to be an non-event as officials kept interest rates unchanged at, zero, at a minus 0.75% and repeated that they remain willing to intervene um, to intervene more strongly in the FX market. They also reiterated the notion that the Swiss franc remains highly valued, with President Jordan saying that they made substantial interventions uh, since March and that there is no specific limit to that. With regards to the Norges Bank, policymakers of this bank kept interest rates unchanged at 0%, repeating that they will stay at that level for some time ahead. That said, they appeared somewhat more optimistic than previously, saying that since the prior meeting, activity has picked up faster than expected, the unemployment has fallen more than anticipated, and oil prices have risen. NOC uh, spiked higher after the time of uh, the announcement, but erased those gains later in the day to be found virtually unchanged against its uh, US counterpart this morning. Now, as for the rest of today's events, during the European morning, Eurozone's current account balance for April is coming out, but no forecast is currently available. Later in the day, we get Canada's uh, retail sales for April. Both the headline and core rates are expected to have declined to minus 15.1% and minus 13.5% from minus 10% and minus 0.4% respectively. We also have uh, three Fed speakers on today's uh, schedule. Uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell, Boston President Eric Rosengren, and, Rosengren, and uh, Board Governor Randala Quartz. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning uh, more about uh, in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description uh, below. So goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, next week. JFT, just fair and direct.